Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another 10 by 7 inch transparent watercolor. This is of an indigo bunting that I took photos of in our backyard. Um, the individual that came in was molting into his uh, nice plumage, so he had some kind of grayish spots that, uh, feathers that, when I painted it, I kind of uh, improved his paint job a little. And uh, in doing it, the background I had was kind of a greeny gray, and I wanted to do something that I thought would plague up the blue colors a little bit better. So I went with some pinks and purpley kind of colors. To get a really smooth background, I started by pre-wetting the paper to do a wet-on-wet -wet wash. And I used a bunch of colors that I had mixed up and then washed them into the page. I blotted off some of the extras and then charged in a couple of extra greens just to kind of give it a little modeling on the bottom. Once those colors were in, I hit it with the hairdryer to set in the colors. And then I went about putting in some other colors that would start to bring the background more into focus. So I'd have the really blurry background, but I'd have some areas that were coming into focus with sharper edges. And uh, eventually I brought in some other areas where I um, put in some other greens that were more sharp in focus. And you'll see I'm starting to put in some, some more greens. I thought I needed some things put up in that upper right hand corner. So I put in the, uh, the blurry portions behind and then I started with on the dry paper another wash of these greens, a glaze of the greens, to have some of the um, leaves coming into focus. So I'd have the blurry background, I'd have a middle ground, and then I'd have the really in sharp foreground, which I, I think usually works well with many photos that it gives you a little bit more uh, depth to the painting as you go through. Once I was happy with the main background, I removed the frisket and then I transferred the rest of my sketch over using trans tracing paper and then went about just blocking in the lightest local colors of all the background elements. I always like to cover the page as soon as possible and just to start so I'm not balancing anything off the white of the page. In doing the blues of the indigo bunting I used a whole bunch of different blues. They're, if you're going to be using some you know more purpley areas it's easier to use the ultramarine which is going to mix in with those purples and find a nice uh, saturated color and if you're using the uh, more to the blue green side it's easier to go with the phthalo blues so depending where i was on the bird and the color of that the local feathers i'd use the different blues most of the early work was done with a number two round brush that was really sharp and I kind of would work around different portions of the painting at different times. I'd switched over to a 10 aught here for doing the little branches of the flowers behind the bird. There are a lot of small details on this, so I used the 10 aught a little more than I would in a different painting. And so here around the face of the indigo bunting and by the rump, it tends to have a lot of these kind of purpley tones. And then on the, uh, the back and a little bit on the belly, it more moves a little bit more towards those blue greens. So I move toward the phthalo for more of those blue greens and then the uh, ultramarines and purples for the areas around the, the face and the brow and the rump in those areas and the shaded portions. In mixing all these colors for the branches, I ended up using a fair amount of green, which in the end it looks gray, but as you, I think part of it is that you have all these green elements around it that you'd have a lot of those reflected lights of, the, of those greens. So bringing those into the branches helped unify the painting, but it also ended up, I thought, making it a little more realistic in that it had some of those reflected values on those, uh, on those branches.
I often wear a glove on my right hand when I paint. That helps keep the painting clean, um, especially in the summer. I don't know, I, I have sweaty hands, I guess. And um, sometimes I would notice that on my pinky and my ring finger, I'd see a little bit of paint pick up. Um, so if I wear the glove, that doesn't mess up my painting and it keeps my terrible sweaty hands all off the uh, artwork and I don't have any transfer of color either onto the painting or onto my hands so I, I can keep things a lot cleaner. These are just little cotton gloves. They come with the uh, all the fingers on them. I end up cutting off the thumb, the middle, and the, the index finger so I can get a better grip on the brush but otherwise leave the rest uh, intact. If your hands aren't as sweaty as mine, you may not need them. But And the other thing I'll do sometimes is just put a piece of paper underneath my hand if I'm moving around and can't find where I lost my glove. Most of this I was doing under a magnifier. Um, cause there are all these little details with either the bird's beak and it's, uh, you know, the eye or these tiny little leaves or flowers. So I, I did have the camera off to the side and I was looking through a magnifier. That may say more about my vision than the uh, than just how tiny the details were. But this is a small painting. It's 10 by 7 inches, so some of these details are really kind of on the small side. One thing I've found is that is if you're trying to get these little tiny details, if you hold your brush more upright, um, you tend to be able to get a crisper line than if you're painting more from the side or f uh, with a flatter brush stroke. So as I'm going, I'll sometimes get it really up high and um, just have the point of the brush touching the paper, and that, that allows you to get a really crisp line. These 10 aught brushes are nice in that you can get those little details. The disadvantage is that they just don't hold any pigment, so you're continually going back and getting a little bit more color. If you have a sharp number two, you can sometimes get a lot more pigment on the page because um, it has that reservoir in the, the actual hair of the brush. And if it's really sharp, you can get a lot of line in. Depends what you're painting, though. Late in the painting, I'm usually just putting in lots of little darks to sharpen up detail. You see, I'm working on the feet here, and um, I'll do just little edges and, you know, sign my name at the end. And one thing I always end up doing is I sign my name, and then I spend another hour painting afterwards. It's never really, uh, you think you're finished, and you're not finished. So after picking away at some more details and crisping up some edges, I did think it was done. So there you go, it's a 10 by 7 inch painting of a indigo bunting in transparent watercolor. Thanks for watching. If you have a chance, um, leave a comment or visit the blog or the website.